G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are continuing our series going through individual draft prospects for this year's draft. If you want to see the entire list of players I've done, click in the top right corner, you'll get a playlist to all these videos. Members of this channel also have early access to these videos. So today we're doing Finn O'Sullivan, a genuine number one contender as I record this on the 7th of November and, and things do change. But he's certainly in that top echelon of prospects in this year's draft as a 182 centimeter midfielder from the country. And he's interesting. I did a Sid Draper video yesterday today and the similarities are there not so much stylistically but we're talking about gun bottom age prospects who absolutely tore it up as midfielders that didn't quite have the top age year that some were expecting largely due to injury but in both the case of Finn O'Sullivan and Sid Draper both of these guys are considered top tier prospects in terms of midfield options in this year's draft which really speaks to their talent O'Sullivan started making waves as early as 2022 he burst onto the scene winning the Kevin Sheehan medal as a Div 1 MVP in the under 16s carnival following year in 2023 in the Coates Talent League he was picked in the team of the year despite being a bottom age prospect. So at the start of 2024, he was considered a genuine top end prospect of this year's draft, but unfortunately just had a couple of hurdles in terms of injuries this year. So in the preseason, there was a hip complaint, which probably would have affected his mobility. And then in round one, he injured his thumb and played through that for quite a while. So both of those injuries do affect your game in different ways. You'd say that a hip injury with mobility, that affects like your fitness and your ability to cover the ground and get from contest to contest. A finger injury is probably more about affecting your skills. And while his production probably wasn't there as much as we'd expected, he still did earn a VFL debut this year for Richmond. He had 12 possessions in that game, but six of those touches were score involvements and he kicked two goals of his own. You do get the sense that Finn, amongst a few others here, are the sort of midfield option who could step into a midfield as early as round one next year, provided they have a good preseason and impact at AFL level. So unlike Sid Draper, we did actually see Finn O'Sullivan at the AFL Draft Combine. He placed 8th for agility at 8.13 seconds, second in the running vertical jump. So we'll go through his strengths and weaknesses, but one feature of his game for a midfielder is even though he's 182 centimeters, he's actually very strong overhead and that leap only helps the matter. He also had pretty solid results in the 20 meter sprint, uh, recording 2.9. So anything under three seconds is very good. And the 2km time trial, he recorded six minutes and 28 seconds. So as far as running capacity goes and power, Pace, he's all sweet. So the thing about Finn is he might be the most well-rounded midfield option of any here in terms of inside out balance and ability to play in multiple lines and the fact that even though he's a little bit undersized, he can be an aerial threat. Athletically, he's very solid. Like I said, that, that 20 meter sprint is, is good. I think it's his agility which kind of sets him apart though, his ability to get out of traffic and, and turn powerfully. That's one of his strong suits as a midfielder. He's got really good kicking penetration as well. So there's a balance between him, you know, breaking the lines. He can do it through running carry. He can also do it by kicking really far. So I, I think we've got the makings of a player that could probably play on any line just about. I think he could he could even start his career at half back as a running defender. He's got the running capacity for a start. He's got the aerial game. He's got the decision making and ball use to also be effective in that medium sized defender role and then potentially transition to a midfielder where we know he can play. As a forward, he's got the leap and the marking ability to have an impact there. Although I don't imagine he starts his career as a medium forward. What are a couple of weaknesses on Finn O'Sullivan? Well, I'd say that it was probably production this year. Now, how much of that do we equate to him perhaps being a little bit underdone? Like I said, there was a hip injury. It's hard to quantify what impact that had. Finger injury probably affects skills, but generally speaking, his ability to rack up possessions isn't quite there. He is very impactful. He's considered a high impact per possession sort of player, but you know the numbers he sort of puts up as sort of early 20s, high teens, which is not something you'd ideally see from a top line midfielder. However, like I said, it's hard to quantify the impact that those injuries had on his development this year. We know it's not a running capacity issue. He just seems to not find the ball as consistently as other players, which is not to say that he can't find the footy. I'm just speaking in relative terms. The other one is the same point I made for Sid Draper, and it's probably just around durability. Now, again, I'll say that just because a player had an injury interrupted, you know, top age year does not really forecast their durability throughout the rest of their career, but it is something to consider there. So that combined with the fact that he he probably could win a little bit more of the footy to be an absolute lock-in for pick one. That probably is the difference between him being a unanimous pick one or a likely pick two or three at this stage. In other words, if he showed a consistent ability to rack up 26, 27 possessions a game and be as impactful, we're talking about an absolute 
bona fide star. But like I said, it's a huge testament to his talent level that he didn't have the year in terms of production this year. He battled through it. He showed great resilience, but it's a testament to that talent that clubs are still considering him, you know, with pick one or two in this year's draft. So that leads us to his draft range with Finno Sullivan. He's an interesting one. He's still considered, as I said, at this time, November 7th, a number one candidate. And I'd imagine by the time that this video goes fully public, we probably don't have a clear answer on that, but he is still a contender for Richmond selection one. And at this current stage of time, it's, it's unclear whether Richmond hold picks one and two because I think a Lawler and a Finno Sullivan pairing would make perfect sense. If Richmond just hold the one selection, is there a chance they take Finno Sullivan? Yeah, I don't think there's been enough concrete evidence to suggest it's definitely going to be Lawler, although there is Jagger Smith to also consider here. But I'd still say at this stage, to sit on the fence a little bit, pick one is still probably the start of his range. How far back does he go? Well, um, again, if Richmond hold pick two, I'd imagine he goes pick two to Richmond if it's North Melbourne. Maybe Alex Toru gets taken there. It's a little bit unclear what's going to happen in terms of North's plans. Then there's Carlton. Carlton have been pretty consistently linked to Finn O'Sullivan. I don't know how much of that is grounded in reality. There certainly is a connection to Sam Walsh. I believe they're second cousins. And he's a local homegrown talent and possibly the best midfielder available to them. Is there a chance, you know, Carlton take a Jagger Smith or a Sid Draper? I suppose it's possible. So past that, if it gets past Carlton, it's hard to imagine Adelaide would also overlook him. So I'd probably say Adelaide at the absolute latest, which means that his range is probably picks one to five. But if you want me to guess, I'm going to say he gets taken in the top three selections, depending on where a Levi Ashcroft bid goes, because that could happen first. So it could be pick four then. My current prediction is probably Carlton, assuming that Richmond don't hold pick two in this scenario. Otherwise, if they do, I think that's who they would take with pick two. But let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think about Finno Sullivan, particularly Richmond, Carlton, Adelaide fans? Do you want your club to draft him with one of those selections I talked about? As always, I appreciate you watching, guys. Let me know in the comments any other players you want to see in this series. I'll thank you for watching. I'll thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.